just like you work on a car and you make modifications to it to make it better, there's modifications that we do to our life to make ourselves better. I was encouraged by some to be able to move on with my career. Now I want to help others and know that I'm an example that you can do it. For me, low riding started when I was around 15. I had a neighbor that one day she was picked up by her boyfriend. Came down the street with some loud music and some interesting paint job, and they just grabbed my attention. The second occasion was when I was a uh, high school. I was a freshman, and one of my older uh, friends, his brother, picked us up in his mini truck, going and with the music and looks. I, I was I was really inspired at that moment and, and hooked. And from that moment, it was one of the things that inspired me. I think I want to have a car like that one day. My car is a 2001 Lincoln Town Car. The car is a gunmetal gray. It has a purple and blue pinstriping. There's some other colors in there that help accent it. The rims are center gold and that they're on 14 by sevens. We have the hydraulics, our whammy tank uh, with seven Optima batteries. The hydraulic battery rack is very different than what you see typically out there. And it comes out at an angle. So when the trunk is open, it's right there. You see it and it looks like it's floating. We also have the 4.6 liter engine. So the mural there is the Aztec Warrior and the other one is the Aztec Princess. And that's a compliment just to visualize my, my wife and I. The interior of the car is the leather. Gray as well goes with the exterior of the car. So with this car, Technology is big. Like they say, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, sometimes it takes a village to build a lowrider. The brother in law helped me with the technology side of it to be able to do a touchscreen hydraulic control system. So instead of having just the traditional uh, manual uh, hydraulic switches, we built a touchscreen controlled system. And a friend of mine helped me to use a tablet to control the sound system. I hadn't seen them before. And I want to make sure that if I build something, it's going to be very different, stand out. My favorite part of this car is the technology that's used in it. It's something that sets it apart from other cars I've had, something that hopefully is different for a lot of cars out there. I've had several different cars over the years. The first Loretta I ever built was a 1991 Mercury Cougar. The second car I had was a 1994 Cadillac uh, Fleetwood. My 1994 Cadillac did end up in Laura Magazine in the October 2005 issue. I like to build them to drive them. I like to be able to just get the family in there, whether it's going to a picnic or just going to a car show. I like to take my family with me. What I'm trying to show my, my children is that low riding is a different way of just being able to express oneself. I want them to understand that we all have different tastes, have different flavors, and definitely just be appreciative of the vehicle. One of the ways that I've made the connection for low riding for me and my family is that for my son and my daughter, found the 1955 Taylor Toss stroller and designed it exactly like my low rider. Same color scheme, same paint job. I got the painter that did my vehicle to paint it. So I added the chrome pieces and the bumpers, the side skirts and also the white walls on it. So then that way they had their own little ride. And now they see, okay, this is what our dad does. This is what our daddy does. And they're in a young age where you can help mold them to see the world is more than what you think it is. Uh, so this is a way that I've been able to connect my family to this low riding of mine. I was born in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, and brought over as a young child over to the United States. We early years, we lived in uh, Glendale. Shortly, we moved to uh, the Central Valley, California, specifically in Waterford, California. Growing up in Waterford was a very rural, very small community. Probably at that time, there was about 1,500 people who lived there. So everybody knew everybody. So my parents uh, from Mexico, they came to the United States looking for work. My dad worked in the fields of uh, California, Central Valley, and he was a heavy machinery worker. My mom was also a farm worker. She did some seasonal picks of fruits throughout the Central Valley. I have one sister that's younger than I am. I remember growing up with them always working, but they always made the time on the weekends to be with us. 
One summer and one winter, I had the opportunity to go work with my parents to understand what it is to work out in the fields. Hard work, did it for one summer. Get up early around 4.30, go out to work, and be there all day. It was an eye-opener, the hard work that my parents were doing to make sure we had a good future. And they always said, you should go to school. School's gonna be a way for you to be able to not have to do the same work that we do. I didn't know what I could do, because I didn't have role models and didn't see the people that looked like me. My optometrist saw something in me to be able to encourage me to go to college. I started feeling like people wanted to help me be successful. Having people encourage you that you can do it is great because then you feel you're not alone. Then you feel that you have people behind you ready to support you. So having the, having the optometrist or encourage me to go to college it really changed my life. Right after high school graduation, I went straight to a four-year university, CSU Stanislaus. My thought was, I'm gonna become an optometrist. Being the first generation to go to college and thinking that was gonna be as easy for me as high school, I learned hard that it wasn't. My first class, I super flunked it. I wasn't prepared. I started not doing so good in my other classes, and I started not feeling that support because I wasn't asking for it. It might have been out there, I just didn't know how to look for it. So after two years of doing that, my grades going down, the university uh, disqualified me. I was lost at that point for a period. Maybe college wasn't for me at that moment. So what I felt is that I wanted to do something different. So I, this when I enlisted in the Army Reserve. During that time, I also wanted to go to college, but I also wanted to work in, in law enforcement. So I saw an opportunity to become a police assistant. I was a parking enforcement officer. Then later on, I became a subpoena officer. And during that time, I started questioning, maybe this is a career path for me. So I did the Reserve Police Officer Academy, and I got to become a Reserve Police Officer. I started feeling good about myself again. I was starting to accomplish things. I got invited to go to a round table of different community leaders. And this is the first time I saw different community leaders that looked like me. That helped me make my mind to take a break from the police service and go back to the university. So during my senior year in the university, there was an opportunity for an internship program in affordable housing. My parents were part of a program, a sweat equity program, where you build homes. And that was a home that my parents eventually lived in that we were raised in. So that was a connection I had with affordable housing. I was hired on as an intern. So it was an internship program for one year to learn about affordable housing, to build it, single family homes, multifamily apartments, during the whole time, I had learned so much about the affordable housing arena that it made me think, maybe I want to go into this and become an affordable housing professional. In 2004 is when my internship program started. I went from an intern to assistant project manager to a director working in development to working in asset management to working in housing counseling and education programs. Now I'm the vice president of program and services for the company. The name of the company that I work for is Visionary Home Builders of California. I've been the Visionary Home Builders of California for about 15 years now. Working in affordable housing, I got to work with public officials and government officials. And I saw that being at the table of creating policy was something where you can really make some big changes. So in 2011, there was an opportunity in the city I live in, Manteca, for a planning commissioner. So I decided to apply. After applying and being interviewed, the mayor and council appointed me to that position in 2011. I serve in that capacity, creating change in my city, being able for plan managed growth, and being able to be at the table of creating policy. Plan commission was a great start to understand how government was working, but I wanted to do more for my community. So I decided to run for public office as a council member in 2018, and I got elected in December. So during this term, I wanted to work on affordable housing, to be able to really bring ideas that it is possible to do. Break the stereotypes of who lives in these communities, that it's not those people, it's us, it's people like me. I grew up in that housing. So my life has come full circle. Before, it was me and my parents receiving the services for housing. Now I'm on the other side providing those services for housing, from the educational programs to the development of our communities, helping families that, that were just like me and my family. If you're in school, and you don't find yourself doing well, ask for help. It's limitless what you can do. Opportunities are there. 
You just have to seek them. Once you are encouraged and once you are focused, you can accomplish anything. The preconceived notion of what Laura looks like is not what I am. That makes people start questioning the diversity. And maybe people start thinking, okay, well maybe I thought what Laura is is no longer what it is. It could be anybody. And that's very surprising to people and it's exciting to be able to educate somebody with that. My name is Jose Nuno. I'm an affordable housing administrator, council member, and I'm a Loretta role model.